I too made the mistake of thinking this was going to be a easy, quick illustration. And then I remembered, now that I'm doing it, oh no, there's like a billion steps to get this done. Hello, my name is Jasmine, I'm an illustrator. Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be showing you the whole process of drawing an illustration as the cover for chapter three of my medieval comic Girl Night. Um, so every chapter of this comic, I make a medieval style illustration on the inside of the chapter. So you know how like there's the front cover? There's an illustration behind that front cover. <laughs> I just wanna make my life more difficult making all kinds of art per chapter. To give you an example of previous chapters, so I just showed you chapter one. This is the front cover and then this is the interior illustration. For chapter two, this is the front cover and the interior illustration for that one. So for chapter three, I don't have anything yet. So for today's video, I'm going to show you how I will draw the inside illustration for chapter three. We're actually gonna have to go back a little bit in time because when I started filming this particular video, I actually forgot to film the introduction. So this is Jasmine from the future. So let's go back in time to when I was figuring out the thumbnail phase. This is the thumbnail for this illustration. These little positions I have figured out. I actually made this thumbnail in another vlog. I don't remember which one, but it was a recent one. I need to figure out still what the middle and the decorative things inside the margins. What are those going to be? This thumbnail was helpful maybe about 30% of the way. So I need something bigger that I can visualize this better because we really can't jump into the final drawing stage until we figure out what this other stuff should look like. This is a little booklet. I actually recently got this booklet from Daiso. It had this awesome grid setup with the margins like this. My illustrator brain immediately went to, ah, thumbnails. So I really want to use this paper to flesh out thumbnails better. So that's what I'm going to do with this one. I'm going to transfer what I already know from here and we're gonna blow it up bigger here and figure out those details. For the details that I already know are going to be on here, I'm gonna draw them in pen and then the stuff that I have to figure out will be in pencil. For the decorations around it, I had actually already made a file a while ago. What I was planning on are these decorative leaves. I just need to figure out what shape to have them be. Cool, I think that's a pretty good thumbnail for now. For the middle, I decided to have it be a scene of them training with Alice in the middle and Ollie and then the rest of the men watching on the sides and a little glimpse of the castle with the autumn leaves because this does take place right now in autumn and because the comic isn't black and white, there's really no way for me to show that autumn is occurring. So this is gonna be my little way to show the seasons. Full comic page. Oh, it looks like I already have that set for another page, okay. Okay, that means I have to go under the desk and grab my stash. So just like last chapter's illustration, this is chapter two, I'm pulling it out for reference just so that I stay within the style or any elements I want to copy like pretty much the same proportion of this interior window I want to copy it okay so how I'm going to tackle this bad boy I'm going to draw the margins first then the decorations and then I'll do the squares 
I think I need to do the background stuff first, so... Yeah, and I think I'm stalling a little bit by talking on the camera instead of doing what I just said I was going to do. I always get the jitters before attacking a new drawing, especially a big one like this, but it's really not a big deal if you break it down into steps. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just still stalling. Here we go. It looks like the border is three stripes. So I'm going to draw one, two, three, four lines. Let's start there. the top of the inside frame I don't have templates that can do slightly smaller curves so I pretty much have to hand draw it and yeah it sucks every time you can see that there's like a little bump here <sighs> I don't actually remember how I did that but I'm gonna give freehand a try why not Alright, so that is done. I really wanted to draw the middle part, but because I'm drawing this by hand with pencil, the rule if you're right handed like I am is to always draw the left side first and then move on like that. Okay, so old Jasmine was right. We're not gonna do the inside. We're gonna start from the left. You know how it was hard to hand draw that curve? Well, I had to draw it two more times because the original curve, I accidentally drew it way too low. Like, that's a huge space there. So I erased that, then I redrew it, and then I, I definitely redrew it way too high. And you don't notice that until after you've already drawn the curve, so... So third time is the charm. That's really where it should be. And I think that's a reasonable amount of height for the little picturesque image in the middle. Why do I make myself do all this hard work three times? Why? So this is where we're at so far with the floral design. I am taking inspiration, aka basically copying from this illustration. The bottom part matches this bottom part. Um, but this section is different from here because the proportions of the composition are different. So I need to figure out what this part is going to look like. I need to fill in this area because it's a little too empty to have all this and continue empty like that. It's about balance. So we want busy, empty, busy, empty. I've redrawn this about three times trying to get the flow right of a made up leaf design. And it's been interesting to really get into this style because you really do appreciate how good these artists were when it comes to composition. They really knew what they were doing with these leaf designs. I'm trying to recreate that style here.
I think that's it for the background floral decoration. What's going to be in the boxes will be um, sword positions that I've already decided what they'll be. These are ridiculous thumbnails, but I know exactly what sword positions they are. Uh, so I need to draw them now. So for the whole story, I'm actually going to be mixing a bunch of different sword techniques just for the sake of variety and to make the story more exciting in terms of like training and all that. For this illustration, the five positions that I'm choosing are going to be Italian uh, sword positions that I am pulling from uh, Fiero de Liberi. I, did I say? Fiore de Liberi. Okay, from his book, which was written in 1410. I've talked about this book before in my other vlogs. Um, I got this at the Getty Museum during one of their medieval exhibits, which featured his book, which was really cool. I have a TikTok briefly showing a glimpse of looking at that. I will link that below if you want to see my trip at the Getty that day. So the five positions, I'm pulling them from here and I just need to find them again because I forgot to put tabs. Well, I did put tabs, but they are not about this illustration specifically, they're from the comic. So I'm gonna dig through these and then start drawing. It's 8.30 at night before I venture into a new section in the piece. I think I'm just gonna call it. I'm going to put my peaches on and do a bunch of reading that I've been wanting to do. I need a break. We will return tomorrow. It's 7 13. Just woke up. Let's get back to this. Yesterday it was daylight savings. Everyone I know is a little sleepy. My goal is to finish this drawing today. What we have to work on still is the middle part and the rest of the decorative stuff on the right. Thank you. 
more details in the corners to create a kind of vignette effect in order to stress that this is the focal point. I'm struggling a little bit with figuring out how much to draw because the style of the coloring is actually more painterly. I'm trying to emulate the medieval painting style, so that is using oils or gouache. Line art doesn't really play a big part in this kind of illustration, but honestly what I'm doing here with all of these chapter illustrations, doing a weird mix of both styles. My style, which is more watercolory line art style, uh, mixed with this painterly medieval style, so I really don't know how this is going to end up looking, but I know that once I'm in the digital stage, I'll be experimenting a lot more with balancing out the line art with the painting. Like, essentially, the line art is supposed to be the shading and the texturizing, so here's a perfect example of a tower. See all the little bits of dust and texture on the tower stone? Well, that's what I want to mimic here just adding that dust so that in the coloring stage I pretty much just put one or two layers of color and it'll give it dimension. Look who decided to join us! Okay, so I think I'm done with the middle illustration. There are a few tweaks that I'm going to have to do digitally. I know it's not very clear right now, so that's another thing I want to kind of clean up in the digital phase. Uh, I can make him wear bright color, so he kind of will stand out. The other thing I want to fix, I think, is the training field border. Like, I, I think perspective-wise, it's a little too high compared to these figures. So I might just move the figures slightly up bump them a little bit up so that it doesn't look kind of skewed. I don't know. I think with fresher eyes, I'll be able to tell if it's off. Those are my thoughts on this interior illustration. The next thing I want to tackle is the letter C here. It's supposed to be an ornamental C because it's the first letter of chapter. So every chapter title, I have a different decorated C. Ah, so I'm gonna do that. It's always kind of stressful because I don't feel like I'm well-versed on medieval decorative arts. So I always have to go to a reference. For calligraphy stuff, I obviously have a book. This I got at a thrift store. It's the Illuminated Alphabet. And so I get a lot of ideas for titling through this book. So I'm gonna go through this and pick out an idea of how to decorate this letter C. To show you what I'm talking about, so these are the previous chapter illustrations I've done. This is for chapter 2, and this is for chapter 1. I took screenshots just so I made sure I wouldn't repeat the design. I don't know, I'm just a little paranoid about that. I found this design that I liked with these little medieval leafy designs in the middle. I have to think carefully about what I want the design to look like because there's going to be color, and I want the C to stand out. If the illustration's going to be reddish pink, then I have to think carefully about how I want that C to look like, both color-wise, having to stand out from the equally intricate border. So I just drew a thumbnail of what the C could look like. Okay, so it's 10.30 now. I'm going to wake up the bird and have breakfast before I jump into another phase of this illustration. It's really about taking proper breaks and separating the tasks at hand. It's a very big illustration. I constantly forget that making these chapter illustrations is labor intensive. There's so many things that I have to figure out along the way and I completely forget every time. Like the letter C, the decorative stuff, like 
there is so much going on in these illustrations, I forget. Which makes me think that like, I really hope readers can appreciate just how much work is put into just these illustrations alone to make the story better. And hopefully making these videos, I mean, people can see just how much work goes into this. It's not just a pretty picture. And I am speaking for myself too. When I put this project on my task list, I too made the mistake of thinking this was going to be a easy, quick illustration. And then I remembered now that I'm doing it. Oh no, there's like a billion steps to get this done. But that is not to say that I'm not having fun. I keep doing these illustrations the way that I'm doing them because they're a lot of fun to do. I just need to remember how long they take when I'm doing my planning thing. Good morning. It looks pretty simple now, but in the painting phase, I'll be adding tons of colors and details in it. And now for the rest of the piece. I have to finish this and draw the flower, and I am still seeing like weird patches of empty space that are bothering me, so I might fill those in with more of that filigree decoration. We're at the last stretch of this drawing phase. I'm excited to finish this already. It's 420. <laughs> I'm done. I was hoping to be done a little earlier than four o'clock, but it is what it is. I found to do the last bit of this drawing meticulous or I can't find the word, but like I was kind of tired of working on it. So I'm glad it's done. I'm fully over it by now. <laughs> I think it's also like I'm dying to see it in color. So I'm a little bit impatient to get all the details out, but it's done, so ah, I can, I can one, take a deep breath, and two, I can end this video. I really don't know how it's going to look. I have like colored blocks in my head, but every illustration for the chapters, each one is kind of different in my head. I can see that things are a little bit different, so this is going to come out different as well, and it's just a matter of like, how? What's, what's it gonna look like? So I'm really excited to finally jump on that. Thank you for watching this whole process. If you enjoyed that, know that I have made videos making the other two chapters, making the other two chapter illustrations. Um, I will link them in the description below. If you have any questions about this whole process, medieval questions, questions about the story, write a comment. It always helps my channel's algorithm since YouTube has no idea what to do with my content. <laughs> and with that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.